Hi everyone, uh, this is Alfonso speaking. Um, so we can actually get started and then if people join, they can, um, they can follow on. <coughs> so, uh, well, welcome to our uh, legislation drone and public safety uh, webinar. Uh, my name is Alfonso Zamarro and I am the drones uh, activities manager at INA and together with me is Benoit, uh, yeah, who's actually, he's our, um, public policy uh, manager and in charge of everything uh, related to uh, legislation. Uh, next slide, please. Well, this is this is basically us. So um, you will get our contact details at the end of, uh, of the presentation. So this is a bit of what we, what we want to discuss today. Uh, we can start with some um, <clears throat> introductions and through the top to know who's actually present here. Uh, then I will uh, jump into um, a bit of a briefing of uh, who's in and what we are doing actually on drones. And then we can move, especially with Benoit, regarding uh, the work that we are doing on drone legislation specifically for uh, emergency services. And most importantly, how you can actually be part of it and participate. So uh, we can uh, start with uh, by introducing yourself with a short tour de table. Uh, so we can maybe start with uh, Aldo Perotti. Aldo, can you hear us? Um, if not, we can pass to uh, the, the firefighter uh, zone from Antwerp. Yes, hello. Can you hear us? Yes, we can. Okay, um, I'm Alec and I'm part of the innovation team in the fire department of Antwerp. Hello, my name is Van Hilt. I'm uh, also part of uh, team innovation. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, oh, things are moving. Uh, Igor Magdalenic. Can you hear us, Igor? Igor, maybe you're still uh, muted. Uh, okay, uh, Johan? Can you hear Johan? We can't hear you. Otherwise, if you if you can't talk, you can feel free to actually tap on the on the chat as well. We can also see that. Um, Rian. Okay. Uh, Rian is uh, saying hello from the chat. Hello, Rian. Okay. Perfect. Okay, great. Uh, is there anyone uh, else uh, who just joined? Uh, DL. No, and uh, I see that uh, Aldo Perotti managed maybe to join us again. Are you here, Aldo? No. Okay, no problem. Um, okay, well, we can get started then. Um, so, uh, next slide, please. Uh, starting with uh, Ina uh, and who we are, basically, as a quick overview, uh, Ina is an NGO based in Brussels, which basically works to uh, improve the, the safety of our community and actually help emergency services um, on their job of uh, actually protecting our community. Um, Ina gathers more than 1,500 professionals from emergency services from more than 80 countries. Uh, and also more than 100 corporations from all over the world who are actually working together with uh, emergency services and in the public safety environment. 
And basically what all these people do together at INA is working on different topics that can actually help uh, improve emergency services and public safety. For example, uh, advanced mobile location, next generation 112, uh, drones, artificial intelligence, social media, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, specifically, uh, I am in charge of the area regarding drones. Um, and we are basically running several initiatives in here. So this is a summary of the work we've been doing on the, on the last uh, three years on, on the link you can actually access uh, to more details. Uh, but basically, um, some examples are the work that we've been doing um, with DJI to research different use cases with our RPS and emergency service paper where we did um, uh, exercises and field tests to discover how drones could actually help first responders. We run a drone efficacy study to actually generate data and compare statistically how drones improve search and rescue missions. And then we launched recently the Drone and Emergency Network, which aims to bring together all the emergency services who are actually working in this environment to, uh, to connect with each other and actually work together to make drones uh, a mainstream tool in public safety. Next slide. So, uh, and currently this year, what we are actually uh, working on is in these three area, areas. So one is uh, generating some good practices and guidelines, guidelines on SOPs for search and rescue. Uh, we have our legislation uh, position paper, which we will actually present uh, today. And then we are doing as well some work on uh, supporting some uh, research initiatives on drones uh, for medical emergencies actually. Uh, specifically in everything that's uh, using drones for triage purposes. Next slide. And this doesn't stop here. So uh, at Dina, what we, uh, are the future projects that we are actually uh, focusing on is everything re related to uh, integration of drones in the air traffic management, what we call UTM. And this is very critical because all this future that everyone is talking about on, uh, we have drones delivering packages, we have uh, taxi drones and drones flying all over the city. Uh, that's a future which is very interesting, but as well, it's very much um, focused on the commercial applications of this technology, but no one is really talking about uh, how these futuristic uh, scenario would actually help first responders and how we can actually make it happen. Because at the end of the day, many of the people that have permission to find complex environments are public safety entities, uh, not commercial operators. And this, um, actually this future may start uh, in the public safety environment. So we are, we are planning to launch a project next year related to what does that mean for emergency services and how we can actually test uh, technologies beyond what we have now. Next slide. So now focusing more specifically on uh, the topic that's uh, here today. So at the ENA, we will run some research on uh, legislation for drones and specifically how that affects uh, public safety organizations. Um, when we started researching on this, there was almost no legislation at all. And that was three years ago. Then we started to see that uh, while we were waiting for the European legislation, um, there were some um, some national uh, legislations that were uh, appearing, and we started actually analyzing okay what this national legislation is saying, and what we encounter is the following: is that uh, up to this moment we have many different versions of how public safety entities are integrated in this legal framework for drones. Um, and in some countries, there is no uh, exemptions, no permission at all. In some countries, there are. Uh, but then the definition of what's included in this public safety organization is also very diverse. So we have countries where it includes police, fire, ambulances, rescue teams, everything. And all of them have exemptions and permissions to operate uh, freely. But then on the other side, we have places where it's only the army or it's only the army and police, for example. Uh, so it means the rest of, uh, of uh, agencies they need to operate just like the commercial um, operators. And then we are seeing that now we have a new European legislation, which is actually a great thing because it's a big first step forward. However, still we don't see any mention of, um, of uh, emergency services, which means that it leaves it to the national, uh, national countries to actually regulate on this matter if they, if they want actually to do. Um, 
and as a result, what we have is uh, first responders can't use freely around Europe um, the technology as we as we wish. Uh, training and standards are also different uh, among the countries, and in a in a continent so integrated as Europe, that can also be a big issue. Um, yeah. So basically, what we want to do in, with this initiative of the position paper is to channel the needs of emergency services towards the lawmakers. Lawmakers, they are not proactive; they are always very reactive, and they need they need to listen what's the use cases, what are the needs of emergency services to really start shaping the um, the legislation towards that and this is what we want to do at the INA basically we want to gather all these insights from all of all of you to actually make it happen next slide that's actually for me this and, one uh, yeah so Benoit is going to actually explain more about what's uh, all this position paper initiative and how how it works and as well um how you can be part of it so all yours Benoit yeah thank you Alfonso um so first of all, like a couple of uh, words about me and, and my job. Uh, so I'm the public affairs manager of INA, which means that, uh, well, in other words, it's lobbyists. And which means that uh, what I do is um, usually I meet with representatives of, for instance, the European Commission and the European Parliament to discuss uh, how to make the law better protect the European citizens by improving the functioning of the emergency services. And uh, this kind of position is very useful because, um, as you maybe know, sometimes the uh, people stuck in, uh, in Brussels in the European institutions, they don't really have the visibility of what's happening on the field and what the problems are and so on. So that's why my job is a bit to, uh, to report to them what is happening. So um, the problem that I have is that I am not uh, an emergency service professional. I am not a firefighter. I'm not a policeman. And um, that is why what we need when we come to, when we go to the European institutions to discuss with them, what we need is benefit from your knowledge and your experience that you tell us what problems you are facing, how we can address those problems and so on. So this is why we are organizing this uh, this webinar and we're trying to establish contact with you is really to uh, benefit from uh, your feedback on um, how to improve your work basically and in the end the finality is to make sure that uh, your voice the voice of public uh, safety professionals is represented in brussels uh, during the next legislative debates when it comes to uh, discussing a new legislation on drones so uh, that is why we are preparing at the moment um, a position paper. So a position paper is a document that um, many organizations uh, have and, uh, and publish in, uh, here in Brussels or all the, the organizations doing some public affairs. So it's a document, usually quite short, two, three pages, that detail the position of an organization or a group of organization, or it can be a company, on a specific uh, topic. And this document should be very uh, so concise, as I said, but also uh, describe the problems that are faced and also include some recommendations on how to address these problems. So the goal in the end is that uh, the decision makers, so people working at European Commission and European Parliament, and also at the ministries of the member states, they use these documents to see what are the positions of each um, interest in the field and also uh, sometimes there are some proposals that they had not think about, so they can take them into account, yes or no, so this is up to them to decide, but at least they see how people stand on some topics and what are the problems that are faced, the possible consequences of a law, and uh, also some suggested proposals, which of course are always welcome. As a result, what the position paper should include is always some recommendations, so concrete things because uh, usually for instance when i go to the european parliament i explain the problems and so on and then they tell me uh, okay yeah that's very interesting but how do i solve that so that's why this should include key recommendations on what to do and of course it should only mention realistic proposals uh, which means that um, you probably face a lot of issues when it comes to using drones in emergency situations um, not all those issues can be solved by uh, legislation and especially by European legislation. So that is why the position paper 
um, will only stick to uh, realistic proposals on what can really be done at uh, the European level, uh, which also includes the issue of the, the competencies of the European Union. However, as Alfonso just uh, said, uh, some basic legislation has just been voted on joint at the EU level, which kind of also opens like a, a legislative basis for the European institution uh, to act. And just to show you an example of how a position paper usually looks like, this is a position paper that we had done in the past uh, two years ago. And uh, basically, as you can see, it's a short document um, that includes some link to a legislation that is already existing, the description of some problems. And then we have a part on key recommendations on how to solve those uh, problems. So that is typically how a position paper uh, looks like. When it comes to the position paper on uh, the issue of drones and emergency services, so we have prepared a first draft of a position paper, which uh, include a few recommendations and a few description of some issues. And uh, this is why we wanted to uh, tell you about that today is because uh, we would like to uh, get your feedback on this position paper. So I'm going to show uh, how the, this uh, draft document looks like. Maybe Alfonso, if you want to go through it. Yes, totally. So basically, we are basically talking about um, before the, the challenges uh, of, uh, of the current uh, legal framework around Europe at the European level and as well at uh, national level. So what we're proposing are basically three points. The first one is a common European approach on the use of UFAs by all emergency services. So it's paramount that we include all emergency services under uh, under this, um, this framework. It's not only the police, it's uh, fire services, rescue teams, uh, ambulances, civil defense, um, even if the organizations are volunteer organizations, but they're actually the ones offering that um, that uh, emergency service coverage. Uh, then we should have, uh, oh, actually that's the second point. Uh, the first point is actually that uh, it should be a common um, element around Europe, especially because Europe is very integrated even on emergency response. Uh, emergency response is obviously um, managed at the national even regional level, but it's fully integrated within the uh, civil uh, civil protection mechanism. And it means that at any point, a uh, European uh, emergency services from one country, they go to another to help and they need to have the same sort of uh, uh, standardized training to fly and um, their certification should be uh, accepted uh, around Europe to operate easily. A firefighter, for example, that goes from Spain to France uh, to operate in a wildfire. And then the final point, the third point is uh, the need to create a platform where uh, a channel of conversations where legislators at national level but at European level as well, they are able to hear the needs of operational people. Uh, here we're not talking about having um, a delegate um, that represents uh, fire service, but really ac actually people who have experience on the field to sit down with legislators, either at national or either at European level, to really share uh, the real experiences of, uh, of, these, uh, of these people uh, to legislators. And this is very important because uh, drone technology is evolving extremely fast. We cannot keep up uh, on, on how fast it is evolving. So if there is no uh, channels like those that we propose, uh, legislators are gonna uh, create legislations that are gonna be obsolete very quickly. Uh, so by bringing uh, the end user closer to the legislator, we expect that they are going to stand faster how things are evolving and, and what are their, their real needs, basically. Uh, we can go back to the presentation. Thank you, Alfonso. Perfect. So, so um, as we say, so this is just a first draft that we've done, Alfonso and I. Now, it's uh, up to you to uh, send us your feedback, to comment, to add some elements, to add some proposals. Um, uh, we So we prepared like um, a form uh, where you can send your feedback. I'm gonna show you. You basically have to click on this link. 
of course the PowerPoint presentation will be sent to you um, after this webinar. So yeah, there we are. Here we have um, the, the form to uh, submit your feedback. What we will need from you is just your name and your email address. Uh, and then you are free to comment the, what we say in the introduction. And then uh, for each paragraph, you're free to uh, add your comments. It can be done in English, in French, or in Spanish, uh, as you prefer. And uh, in the end, you're also free to add any other comments to uh, include another suggestion that we haven't uh, thought of and uh, so on. So uh, this is uh, fairly easy to, to do. Uh, let us know in case you encounter some problems. Uh, we are, of course, free to, to help you. And uh, the deadline is quite uh, long to provide your comments. It's a bit more than uh, six weeks uh, so that we're not too much affected by uh, the holidays. So um, don't forget also that, uh, as I said, the proposals must be realistic as well and um, include some things that are, that are feasible, basically. Um, so uh, is there any question on what we have presented so far? For those who cannot speak, you're free to uh, use the chat as well. Okay, I don't hear any question. Uh, so, as I said, the recording of this. Uh, ah, thank you. <laughs> uh, as I said, um, the recording of this uh, webinar, as well as the, this PowerPoint presentation, and the links to the document and to the the form to submit the feedback, will be sent to you by email so that you can uh, take time to have a look at the document and provide your comments. You are also free to uh, forward it to some of your colleagues or. Uh, pairs who could not join the call, so feel free to uh, forward this information. Um, Alfonso, do you want to continue? Yes, uh, and also uh, what we're inviting all of you is actually to join our uh, drone network. Um, this is quite important because um, this is the, the channel that we use when we have, for example, the position paper ready or when we launch any sort of project or request for people to participate. Uh, it's through this network, so it's it's quite important uh, that we have you uh, registered. And as well, because whenever we go um, to legislators and to present this position paper, for us explaining that we have a network of X amount of people, all professionals of emergency services, it's uh, very powerful to really reinforce the message and the feedback of this position paper that we are actually building all of us. Uh, so yeah, to join is just a quick form uh, in this link. So very easy, it takes two minutes. Uh, next slide. And then, uh, well, here you have uh, our contact details. So if you happen to have any questions or uh, you want to reach us, uh, just feel free. Uh, you have here your emails, so uh, do not do not hesitate. And well, thank you very much all for uh, participating and being here today. Thank you very much to everyone.